how do I start? I'm supposed to start. Hey guys, if you don't know me, I'm Anthony Francisco, and I'm a senior visual development artist here at Marvel Studios, and um, I get to help with designing the heroes and villains of the MCU. So today's presentation is about how I designed Loki for Thor Ragnarok. Um, and um, yes, and then we'll get to it here. Um, so yeah, so uh, when I was given the task of, by Andy Park, he's the guy who led uh, Thor Ragnarok. And he he said that, you know, I, I would design Loki for Thor Ragnarok. But, um, but I was talking earlier about uh, Charlie Wen designing it the first time for uh, Thor 1 and Thor 2. And um, that's really big shoes to fill. And luckily, Taika Waititi wanted uh, a brand new look for Loki. So he wanted Loki to feel really like, you know, macho and really, um, really like a like a Viking. You know, I guess that that's how uh, when you say traditional look for Norse mythology, uh, that's what I thought um, it was going to look like. Um, not trying to really steer clear from how he used to look like before. But um, but yeah, so here's some of the images I started I did this like i think it's a day or a couple of days just trying to feel him out trying to uh have just the position of like soft material like this um hold on let me draw on this uh, like fur over metal over uh, leather and mainly just cloth overall and little pieces of uh, bling right so i i like to like move the eye here around and just these little pieces and try to design the patterns to all kind of go up so even even the illustration you know has a kind of leaning asymmetry so that it feels more dynamic um, so okay next to the next one here trying to play up the furs more and and the braid braided um, leather uh, like girdle. <laughs> Thank you, Abiznezer. Thanks for visiting. And and I was trying to play up the you know, trying to different type of helmets because the other helmet was really metal and huge and very elegant, very regal. And he uh, I was trying to play him more like a like a warrior prince, but you know the the second born, I guess. Okay, and here more versions, and then and then we got to this where, um, uh, how do you say this? They we, um, so Taika wanted a brand new character, a brand new look for Loki. So, but then Loki, when I was designing it the first time, it didn't look quite like uh, Loki from before, and we wanted him to still resemble loki from the first movies but totally different costume still and him feeling like he's trying to fit in in sakar so this is my first take I, I like the design like from like back to front from what's underneath the armor what's the clothing underneath so i started with this and sa same kind of idea um, everything is soft leather armor or even softer and then just like little pieces that come from Asgard to bring into, you know, this, this still feels more Asgardian. And then armor, more leather, keeping the asymmetry going on. I couldn't find all my images here, but I, I wish I had um, on my other versions where I, I was having trouble trying to push him to feel more like Sakar. This is not that version yet. This is where I'm still trying to make him f feel like he's from Asgard and keeping some elements from Asgard into, into this new costume. And this is where I started uh, experimenting with straps. Still keeping the green. And develop, developing him some more with different uh, unique armors that could fit more in Sakar. And um, 
Alexei Brilcott also did some amazing designs for this guy and you guys should visit him in his uh, Instagram. How long did each iteration take? I think, I don't remember how long we were working on this, but I tend to do a lot, generate a lot of ideas the first day, but everything is kind of rough. So I would say like five of the ones I showed you, the first versions that was like, um, um, more like Viking like that was all done in a day. Maybe four of it. And th this is where I felt like I had a breakthrough because I was trying to find like a, a unique look for his armor. And I was just thinking, oh, like padded, softer, um, softer leather armor uh, because he doesn't want to get hurt. And he's a magic user, right? Usually they're not as armored. They're usually behind like a warrior. So and then this is where I started getting the diagonal lines because I was really trying to figure out in the script what he's about. And, you know, he he lost his mom and he lost his dad and his sister's trying to kill them. Um, and all of that makes it feel like he's off balance, you know, um, just with mourning inside, like he's he's really in pain. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. So yeah, so I was trying to try to trying some colors here for him. When I was doing this, the asymmetry still building that up. Um, but again, like I said, I start from like the under under armor stuff to the uh, the I don't know if you call it over armor, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and then and then I start with oh did I skip some stuff? I was really enjoying trying to figure out new types of armor because but still have remnants from uh, Asgard, right? But but changing the shape. But Okay, and um it's more more asymmetry and diagonal lines to really play up that you're not sure if he wants to be good or bad, you know, in, in this story. Playing up different materials. We're just trying to come up with something feeling unique. And uh, starting with the colors. So um, this is the, like the original, uh, how do you say this, the feeling like Loki of old, but now I gotta bring him to Sakar, right? If he's in Sakar, should he, should he uh, uh, rise up in in the ranks and then be with um, the uh, the grandmaster? He has to look the part. So um, they had asked me to do more versions that that feel more colorful, and I'm I'm not in that part yet here. Different types of armor, first that feel like they're from. for mass guard and then trying just leather armor do you create all these illustrations in photoshop yes everything's in photoshop um if hopefully this is zoomed in enough shout out to under armor <laughs> yes under armor give me some sponsorships <laughs> so i tried the sim the um symmetrical route and when I was doing this, it, it didn't feel right. It felt like he was too put together. Like, you know, I, I'm i confident I can do this. But um, I, he just has to feel like he's really out of sync. So, and then I come to this image where this is, I, I think this is where it was coming all together. And I had, had the right armor in the right place. And having this side feel heavier than the other side. Um, this cape covering one side of his his shoulder and then really kind of figuring out how this sits on top of his body and even how it's how it's built or how he would wear it you know and that's why i started from the bottom up right trying to dress him
and then make it feel more elegant and elaborate, right? Because he wants to be in with um, with the Grandmaster, and and then then I started putting the purples in, uh, and and th this process actually slowly evolves, like constantly while while I'm doing the pieces, I'm just trying to feel him out and and see what's you know what his character is, what he does in the film. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to miss a lot of stuff that I want to talk about because in other presentations, I'm just standing and I'm, you know, not rattled by the, uh, I'm already apologizing if I miss anything, but hopefully um, you guys stick with me here. Um, so the purples, I, I put that inside just so it could symbolize his mourning, right? In some countries, the color purple symbolize that. And I wanted to try to put this in there and it happens to uh, work well with the green. Um, So when this was presented, they uh, they actually liked it, and Joe and Kevin. And, um, You're asking what brushes do you use on Photoshop? What brushes do I use in Photoshop? I like using different brushes. I have like the Jamie Jones, and I got the Craig Mullins palette here uh, brushes. But for simplicity, I like using um, Anthony Jones's brushes. Uh, the one he gave like a long time ago. It's just nice and simple round brushes and some color dodge brushes. I never, uh, the only time I make my own brushes is if I have to make patterns on the costumes. So, so yeah, so here my wife's feeding me the question. So how do you, you Kim art, how do you stay efficient in your art and time with prioritizing details in your character design? Staying efficient. It's actually for me, it's hard to be efficient because I have so much ideas that I want to put down and my hand can't move fast enough sometimes. So it gets really messy. So that's why I I uh, have not really a formula, but a step by step to start with the body first, like a, almost like a naked body first and um, and build up from there so I could slow down. And then if I have an idea, I just have another panel open and I just sketch the idea out really quick or a, a, a notepad beside me, you know, like a little notepad. And then I just sketch out the idea in, in very like quick, kind of like, like, okay, uh, can you see me here? Like, I'll just go, even, even just this quick character. So, okay, I want shoulder pieces there. This is gonna be the centerpiece for there. I'm gonna have an asymmetrical skirt there. And for him, I think I, I started drawing these lines going here because I, I drew like, okay, this is symbolism. This is for myself, by the way. I I just do this for myself. Okay, he's he's like a teeter-totter. He's all strong on one side. And I think that's when I started, oh, maybe I could, I could use that theme to design the whole costume, you know? So everything started leaning on the right side. And then I tried to try to stick with it. Sometimes it doesn't work, and you know I have to do new, new ideas with it. I think even the belt armor that you see here, the little, um, oh, oh, somebody's, sorry. Somebody's asking, what is your relation with the costume designer? Relation? Oh, um, well, Mai's Ruby is amazing. You know, she did an amazing job in taking the design and and making. Oh, um, well, usually it's um, Andy Park is the head of this show. So what happens is he is the guy that supervises um, the, co uh, not really supervised, but he works together with the costume designer and the costume department to, you know, to, to make sure the designs are um, close enough or which could work, which could not. Because then if it can't work, it comes back to us and then we do paint overs to see if some of the stuff works. Um, and uh, like, like, like all the other costumes like Thor, you know, Andy designed Thor and he designed um, 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 Hela and those horns took so long with uh, Andy designing it with, um, with um, Adam Ross. Uh, I mean, Adam Ross is uh, pretty much built the, the, the helmet for Hela. Um, so yeah, I, I usually, I, I met her like twice, but um, I'm usually in like two, three projects at the same time. So it's just no time to like 
go and out there but i i'm not uh i'm not the supervisor and he's like the director of uh, visual development and then ryan minor ding is the head of uh, visual development so he oversees everything yeah you guys should check out their instagrams you know, it's really cool you'll see so much more um uh, cooler designs <laughs> anyway uh yeah so again i got lucky that I got to work on you know this fell in my plate and I got to actually really um, put a lot of effort in this design so here I think did I talk about this already uh, this is where I, the purples I'm adding in here and even putting this armor piece I'm, I was trying to make it asymmetrical do you um, for references do you did you prefer prefer references or mood boards before doing different iterations? Oh, with me for Thor, uh, for Loki, I I actually didn't look at anything. The only thing I guess I looked at was Thor, uh, Loki in Thor: The Dark World, just to see where I'm jumping off of. Because remember, I didn't. Uh, I was supposed to design this based on Charlie's Charlie's work. Um, so that's how it started. So those shapes and, and the feel of it uh, was mostly inspired from from his piece. Um, and then I just uh, broke the rules, right? I tried to find the rules of the rhythms of that piece, like the abstractions, I guess, where the lines flow. Uh, when, when I say abstraction, meaning like the lines where this goes in or where this line goes into there. I forgot exactly what is with Charlie's Loki. I think Charlie's Loki has a piece right here, like a big one, and then armors on the on the shoulders, right? And armor here. So I, I decided, okay, those are my main pieces that I'm not gonna switch positions and I'm just gonna design within that area. So like for example this little swish mark here. This swish mark actually started as a Okay, the story is, because he's trying to get, this is my own story, right? It's not anywhere. I just give myself these kind of stories to, to help maybe open my mind to the design. So I know Grandmaster is the richest guy there, and he's almost like, you know, uh, like what if his, he is a, a really well-known rapper, and this guy wants to be a rapper with him, and he wants to wear a lot of chains. You know, like, like I was thinking of Mr. T. So... What if Loki had his symbol L hanging over here? I, I didn't really draw it out, but I was just thinking here, and then he had a lot of chains around him. And then slowly, oh, that doesn't look good. So this is like real time. I'm, I'm showing you guys how my mind just darts in different directions. And then, okay, that won't work. But what if I did the L like this? It still would resemble his, you know, in, in the old costume, his um, chest plate, I guess. Uh, and then it gets smaller and smaller because because he's leaving his life from being as guardian to accepting the sakar and he's like really switching who he is because i think a traumatic experience like losing your mom and your dad uh will will make you i guess depressed and i don't want to feel this way and make me someone else you know that uh, i think that's what i was thinking and once they said oh we gotta make him feel more sakar and really go with crazy colors uh, that was the next direction I had, uh, which will come a little a little later. So there's more images to show. Um, unless you guys want me to jump to the Sakar, the, the Sakar versions already, I could jump to that. Rohan Rohan Santos, uh, Ron Ron Te, Ron Tatos. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you're getting some stuff from it. Sorry, I'm new to. Can you show us how you start designing costumes? Start designing costumes. You want me to start drawing? Uh, How many variations usually appear in the process? All here. This is this is how I do it sometimes. I would put it all, all out like this. Okay, like uh, okay, it's time to design horns, uh, helmets. So I would put all the helmet designs. First, I would have his base um, uh, clothing that uh, is was approved already. So this green piece was approved. This green costume was approved, and now I had to design the helmet. Yeah, so do, do, do you 
show all this alteration to your leads is this the usual standard amount of design exploration for feature movies yes actually the stuff i'm showing you is not all of the designs i i did um it's it's the ones that i want to show you because they look good the other ones don't really and it's very sketchy um and so i would be working at the same time like this okay like this right and just to make sure <clears throat> that I see the horns very differently. Like this is definitely a different shape. I guess this is definitely a different shape and goes here and kind of leads your eye to this square shape right here. And even though this color and the yellows are the same kind of color, but since you change up the, uh, the specular and make it shiny, then there, you could do variation in that. So in, in these versions, I had taken out the purple from inside, and I think uh, they, they liked that so much, and, and we had to put it back. Um, and this, uh, this, uh, this is a funny story I was thinking with this um, helmet, because, you know, it's, he wants to uh, feel really strong, you know, like, bring me into your, your, your group, Grandmaster. And he just his horns just get keep on getting bigger and bigger, you know. I, I even tried like more, um, uh, what do you call this? More uh, elegant horns like this, to more like robust. Like oh no, I'm a Viking. I could still feel like a Viking even though um, I'm uh, I'm feeling sad or something like that. Well, they said mm. they would love to see some sketches to be fair. I'd like to see the progress ones that they look cool. Oh, the progress, uh, the sketches. I don't have the sketches prepared. It's in my sketchbook. Maybe I could show that to you guys in another video. All, like all my sketches for, for you know, Dora Milaje. Because I put it all in, in one book. Like I just fill that until it's done. Maybe we could go through that if you guys. But I mean, some of it I can't because uh, there's some stuff that you guys can't see in there. <laughs> So I have two cameras here, so I apologize. How much iteration do you do per day? Iterations per day. I don't really remember, but you know, guys, you, you just have to think of in the first day or the two days, just try to try to be focused and get one design done. Um, or at least rendered a little bit. This is the process. I'm sorry, I, I realized someone was asking me a question earlier how my process would mean how to maintain like a control, I guess. And, and that's how I do it, design from, you know, bottom to up, design, do his body first, and then uh, and then build from that. And the reason that being is when you get that design done, you could turn your layers off and on, and then you could see what mixtures work well. And if two days you work only on one thing, I mean, I'm saying this because I wish I could do that this. Because uh, sometimes one day it's just sketches, and I just put all my ideas done and put it to the side and look at it while I'm while I'm choosing one of those sketches and, and finishing it um, but sometimes I get caught up within the um, so do you have to turn hold on I'm not oh, okay, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm not done with my idea yeah so uh, what was I saying oh so um, um oh, sorry my train of thought uh, <laughs> Uh, so that I so so okay so once you have something kind of done you could just start painting on top of that so it's kind of halfway done and then you could see the idea a little more like for example here right the I, I did the design for this and they liked it already um, oh I, I, this is bef so before the actual presentation it would be finished up to this level uh, sometimes it's not when I have too much stuff to do or again I'm not uh, uh, as organized um, it, but once I I am up to kind of like a little bit sketchy level let me let me see if I could find an example for you guys here like you know like at least to this right so if it's to this level I like to like start from here 
and then and then start uh designing the smaller details or something you know like maybe this armor could go a little longer um Or something like that and I don't finish it that much because I want to see what it would look what this blue would look like what if it was here all the way down here you know and I just I block it out this way first how would that look like and go really far because if it's more you know if it catches more light does that feel better if this was metal right St stuff like that or or it's metal but it catches more the the background and then it's darker so yeah and then and and I'll change it enough I'll still have like two uh, images at least beside each other so I could change it enough like if this one went all the way here how would that look like different folds and I have a lot of reference you know it's I guess it's kind of like mood boards but since I've been working for a while in the industry, I think it's like 22 years already, I have stuff that I like from even like, f you know, f five years into my career, I already have stuff I like and I and I incorporate all the time um, as much as I can. And um, I do need to start thinking of new new shapes and new like um, ideas to put in uh, into my newer designs. So what I end up doing instead is I end up trying to look for shapes while I'm designing and I think that's why it's really awesome working at Marvel because you know like Ryan and Andy and when Charlie was there they they know I I kind of go off and try and explore a lot of ideas and that's encouraged you know um but still finish the work you know um so yeah so it's it's been it's been really a pleasure you know uh it, even like Kevin Feige and the producers there they like to see new things I think uh, being not so safe with the ideas and, and open to that really breeds creativity, you know. Said, um, do you so have okay. to churn out a certain amount of constant variation of Loki on the tight deadline while working? Uh, there's always tight deadlines and t deadlines you k tell yourself. Um, managing your time wisely is, is really a a art in itself you know so if let's say your life uh is is you're having trouble managing the time you need to like wake up early you know do this or work out you know that it's kind of like that like that's the feeling but since you love it so much you make sure you design it uh design it sorry you put the design in if that's what you love and if you love more rendering we tend to render more and then you kind of kind of need to like um, temper that a little bit and that's that's what um that's an interesting question guys I, I the question of how much design you need remember um, I I've been working in the industry for a while you know you guys uh, that are beginners don't push yourself so much yet this way work on your design you know better design uh, first like don't don't get like have like 15 ideas and they're all rushed because you're practicing speed. You could practice that as you go along, but already have really nice designs that you like, right? That you like to explore, have that, finish that, put that up and have it there at least ready for people to see. And not, not like, not like, oh, I want all 10 right away. Um, this is my way of thinking anyway in, in my life. Uh, the first job I got in special effects, I just had sketches. I didn't have it, really any paintings. And at that time, it was already, oh, I need a full portfolio. But I didn't have time, really. You know, my my parents were, you know, separated. And I went with my dad. And I'm trying to, like, like be more independent. So I could not, uh, uh, um, how do you say this, let my insecurity, like, stop me from, presenting my artwork even if I get denied with these sketches but what if I, I didn't so there is luck involved in it I mean I talked about this a little bit in um, in a Procus podcast um, but yeah but it, it is hard it is hard to just push myself to just send these sketches because I, I had another friend say oh you got to organize these 
these sketches in 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 a pleasing manner or you gotta have some colored stuff in there and and that's all true you know you should have that um but i was hoping they'd see the design in there it's not like i'm really confident with my design or anything it really is a sense of urgency i think that pushed me forward so with you guys uh, and luck at the same time they didn't need anybody that that could paint because crash mccreary is an amazing artist already all but he's the guy who hired me for ai and um, i don't know if he still remembers me crash <laughs> i'm the little kid that you saw my sketches and i i turned it in and i didn't think any of it like it would go anywhere but i had like a couple of robots in there and i got a phone call and then i worked on ai and it was amazing because all i needed to do was robots that uh, that did one thing like a not a multi-dimensional robot but it's like one of those old robots that that gets thrown in the pile so i did that and all i had to do is line drawing so there might uh, there might be places out there that just need someone to do line drawing designs right um, another question do you have a signature shape or color that you put in your every design so people know that it's yours signature i don't know actually you guys can tell me that if i do because i i try my best to to do new shapes all the time as much as i can and when i see oh i'm doing this shape again how can i break that shape i don't want to do that shape again it's like reinventing that's what i do with alien heads when i design i i is this okay guys i'm i'm veering off uh the loki presentation is that okay with you guys with everyone i just want to know Okay, and if I don't get to your questions, I'm sorry. Um, my wife is the one feeding me the questions. Uh, I don't know how you could, uh, the said, people on Instagram, I don't know how they could ask said, you. Uh, said, do you keep an eye on fashion industry to get ideas and inspiration? Fashion industry, I I, I would say yes, in a way, because I, like, um, I like nice clothes, even though I don't buy nice clothes. <laughs> um i like looking at them or you know nikes i like nikes and nike send me some shoes no just kidding I, uh jordans and stuff i i like looking at those and you know because i before uh, when i was younger graffiti i love like looking at graffiti stuff hip-hop and um and just uh, alexander mcqueen of course and some of the other names i don't remember um, that I like to look at because uh, Alexander McQueen stuff look like concept art just on the runway. You know, I even thought I wanted to be, I wanted to be a fashion designer. Uh, but I guess like with everything, you get insecure and think that, you know, why would anybody want to look at my stuff? I'm not, I don't dress nice. And so these are the same thoughts I'm sure go with every other artist out there. The ones even want to do concept art. And I don't know what it is with concept art that, made me feel like oh i could do this actually it never made me feel like i could do this i it was it was a struggle all the way through it's just you almost had to to, to be have um um how do you say this like uh, some kind of not being delusional but being be confident with myself that at least these designs are good and when people compliment it or or i get a job or even an interview even if i got an interview okay i know they like something about my art it's professional enough that they got me in for an interview uh but maybe it's not the ideas that they need you know so sometimes in an interview if i get uh come in for an interview and i had the piece they they saw i would bring my sketchbook or i would bring some other piece they don't they haven't seen just to show oh these are the other things i can do you know um i know when i do talks uh, or, or do portfolio reviews i i i say almost be specialized with you with your stuff because um that would just lead you to the work you want to do first and then show them oh I'm, I'm i'm good with these other things sorry alien heads so i would try the different shapes of alien heads in my sketchbook i would like okay if straight here curve here um oops or or there's this idea of um you know uh, active and inactive lines because i i got the idea from doing quick sketches in associates of art uh paul Wee. He's amazing, like quick, 
uh, well, he's an amazing artist overall. Uh, you, but he taught uh, gesture drawing. So like we would do these nice like flowy lines. Um, but then he would he would talk about uh, the active and inactive side. So if this is stretching, this is bending, and oh my god, I forgot. This is the active, and then this is the inactive side. So I, I took that concept and maybe applied it to creatures. So if I had a creature like this, this is the, I guess, you know what? I can't believe I'm forgetting this. I think the active side is the one that has a lot of movement on one side. So all it is to remember is one side is just kind of straight or curvy and the other side has so much movement and then it just has this nice dynamic, you know, your eye just goes, moves through that. Um, and even like one side is doing this and then the other side could be doing this. And even within that, you could have one side doing this and then the other side doing this. Um, inactive, inactive sides. I'm saying this because I don't remember. It, I think this is the active side, something that's moving. And then you start putting your like, you know, your 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 um, your design in there. This creature could look like this. Sorry, it's very sketchy. Hopefully this is not uh, too confusing. I'm gonna go a little slower if it's a little fast. Once we get an actor, we, I want a design based on his body type, right? But not all the designs will be that. I, I still do like three or five designs and I will explore how to, how other body types could look like in there. But the one thing I, I would like that I try to do anyway is change his body structure by just using the costume. You know, like if, like if, um, Hopefully I explained that clearly. I was asked earlier what shapes I usually use a lot. This one, <laughs> I use this shape a lot. My mannequin. Uh, Hong Lee, when I first was taking a class at Associates of Art, he said, you need a mannequin. So something you could draw over and over again. Uh, and it's easy for you to draw, right? Um, so let's say his body type is like this. I, so I would do this. I would take this guy and then you know, pull them over here. And normally you paint up everything inside, but for this, I, I, for this, I'm just gonna keep it as a line drawing. So let's say this guy's body is, is more squ squat, more squat like this, and shorter legs. Let's see. And, and how, how can I make him feel taller or, and then this would be the actual actor's body. And then, and then maybe the other guy would be longer, but uh, sometimes I just keep it his body type. So maybe to make his legs longer, you know, I, I do higher, right? I, I, I never took any, uh, I want to take some fashion classes, but I, I, I have listened to a lot of, uh, as much as I can. When I got into the union, I, I wanted to make sure I knew stuff um, and how things are built. Um, but again, whatever interests me is what I look at. So I end up look, look, so I'm looking at fashion stuff. Then I start looking at samurai clothing. So how does the samurai, you know, fit? And and the samurai armor really is kind of like the basis for when I when I put clothing on. You know, like these pieces, because they have like a a shoulder piece that goes uh, sleeve I mean that goes all the way up and it's almost like that's a good base to start putting stuff on top of you know um, and then just deciding this is this is um, the center pieces so like your distribution of details distribution is the video fine everyone's fine okay sorry I'm gonna drink water real quick um and sometimes if you need to, if, if you, hold on, I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> uh, was there, was this a good answer? Did you guys, oh wait, one more thing, sorry. Also, sometimes when you design, you, 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 you constantly look at your silhouettes, right? How, how crazy it could be on top of these guys. And um, also designing in terms of uh, uh, like, 
price, you know, um, not in the sense of the actual amount of price, but let's say this should not be a main, this is not a main character. So we're just going to spend like, you know, a thousand dollars on this. And then this one will be like a hundred thousand. You know, how, how would that, you, you got to be able to tell that this is um, Loki's costume versus, you know, someone from the street, right? Because he's trying to get into the good graces of of the, oh man, what's his name? I forgot, Grandmaster. <laughs> so I had to relate uh, some of the colors from the Grandmaster to, to Loki uh, with the gold. recommend to better your design you know i would think it's a case i'm gonna start closing these okay uh it's it, hold on sorry i'll answer that question let me just go through this part real quick uh for other people that want to see the artwork this is where this this image right here is where i started figuring out the um, you know this this centerpiece here and this this helmet and then from here i started uh, using that um uh, that idea and opening up that because my favorite is this helmet from all the comic books that I used to read is that open top and then I couldn't figure this out quite well so sorry so to better my design like um, you I I guess everyone could do this but it's a case to case basis sometimes it doesn't work this way so I kind of give a lot of examples that you could try so with this one I would just be brave and just do something that's just horrendous. Like, you know, what if it was going all the way here, you know, or it's, it's really trying out your shapes, you know, what if this, what if this one down here and his, his forehead was showing? Because maybe that could jar my mind and just like, let me see other ways of doing these shapes. Um, that's not a good example, but uh, <laughs> a good drawing, but, um, or like this one. I, I know this piece, if it was too high up here, he won't be able to look that way, you know. But let me just see it, if I could do it this way. And if they like it, we could just uh, figure it out um, in once they're making the costume, you know. Um, that's, a, that's what the collaboration is all about. And Marvel really is a champion for, for new looks, you know. Even in games, sometimes I would... Maybe the ideas are just too, too crazy that um, even in games you can't. Oh no! Yeah, we have to do turnarounds. Because uh, okay, in the presentation, I was going to show you some of the turnarounds I did, and how far, how close the design looked in you know, in the in the final piece. I mean, it got darker, but all the all the lines are there. You know, all the lines are there. Um, but again, the you cannot um, like everybody makes the movie great, right? It's just we're just like the beginning of the pipeline. As it goes down the line, everybody puts what you know their um, uh, their skill in it and makes it even better. So that's why you see really awesome stuff on on screen, uh, from the animators to the you know CG guys and. And the writers, and of course the directors, without Taika and that vision, and um, um, Jack Kirby, right? He, Jack Kirby, is the main inspiration for this these shapes. That's what I almost forgot to say when you guys asked the question: Do you have a a a, a look lookbook? Is that what, what it was, or a, or a reference, or Jack Kirby? So once I put that up here, I know this doesn't look quite like Jack Kirby, but you know that was what I wanted to make sure this felt like, you know. Um, and then when when they reined me back and saying, you know, okay, let's make it feel more like Asgardian, because um, we want him to look more like Loki, you know. How could and uh, from the stories, Andy's telling me they really like this uh, costume. Um, but you guys still have to see uh, uh, Al Alexi Brilkos. Uh, uh, it's it looks really good. It's so good. Um, I really enjoy his art, his work. So like yes, yeah, like see, I this is a version I would keep, and this rough, and then I would do another version. So there's this thing up here called um, layer comps. So uh, I'll save. Let's say I'll save this version. So it's layer comps, just easy to click through it. Um, Rodney Fuentebelia showed me this. 
uh, he's another Marvel Studios uh, supervisor. So you go visit his <laughs> his Instagram, check out his work. Um, so he, uh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, okay. So I do another. So turn this off, or keep it on, and then do uh, another thing on top of that, and see where that leads. And Jack Kirby shapes. You know what's Jack Kirby shapes? Um, something like that uh, yes this won't work or can it work uh, can this work saying, how, do you, how did you approach deciding the Asgardian aesthetic in terms of shapes and patterns by the way this this is like something I like to do make the shape and then uh, ma uh, click this quick mask right here and then get a um, um, color dodge I guess just a regular color dodge in and then just uh, make it shiny like this because I, I was in one of Justin Sweet's uh, demos and he did that. It's like, this is how you do quick armor. It's like, oh, cool. And I think I used that ever since, uh, but it's not as good as his stuff. Uh, is he just, it's just a master. At... Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, so something like that. And then I'll, I'll save that as a layer comp. Hold on, I'll answer that question soon. Um, Right, and then I could try it without that, or with, oh, or with just that. And then sometimes I would like to just grab this and make a copy of it and see how that looks like here. Uh, you know, just quickly, it's almost like you're a DJ. You're remixing the musical notes where it's strong up there, and then maybe it's not so strong down here. But I just want to see the color really quickly. Uh, you know, how does that look like? So it's like, it's like, tan, 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 you know, and, dum, 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 and then, so making the eye go around, kind of, I don't really know how to explain that, uh, that well, but hopefully that, <laughs> you got that the idea. So what's the question? Oh, and how did you approach? How did I approach? Um, the Asgardian aesthetic in terms of shapes and patterns. As Garden aesthetic is established by Charlie Wen, I think, and the guys um, uh, that worked on it beforehand, you know, like Andy, I'm sh sure worked on a lot of um, uh, what was it? the Dark Elves, right? Like Andy, I think Ryan also worked on it. Uh, uh, Jackson also did stuff. So pretty much whatever came before, I I, I looked at it, but. Mainly, of course, I looked at Loki, and the guy who designed Loki is is Charlie. Um, so I looked at his stuff. Um, but since I I was allowed to do a better, uh, not a better, a different, you know, look, but I can't do it better than than Charlie could. So I'm I'm glad that I could have taken this in a whole different direction. Um, and and Charlie liked it, which is which is cool. That that's uh. It makes you feel good. Okay, so this is this like a. So this is kind of like a way I I would. Handle doing options. There was a question earlier that I said I was gonna answer. Um, I forgot it already. But this is, this is another version now trying to get more colorful because he has to go into Sakar, and um. He he. he he had to feel like um like Liberace kind of feeling like he's very uh very um like peacock you know I want everyone to notice me and it was hard for me because I'm not so good with colors and this is a good exercise to like push me to to just put that color down so I just be very bold with it and and a way to change the color quickly is aside from using curves uh, sorry, uh, color. Like you just go here and and put color. A lot of artists do this. Pick color and then just you know put the color on top. Uh, initially, and then you go in and kind of do variations on it. Or you could also use um, like a color dodge. You know, and and if it's too bold, I just let it go first and then just put it on ah, like I can't take that I can't take that and then you just um, use the saturation and test out different levels of it to see oh, does that fit right 
you know so that's one way to get variations another way would be to make a selection and and then just adjust it through curves color balance um, but this what's nice with this it will be in a in a adjustment layer all by itself so like curves you know and then and then curves even has like you could go to red channel and then just change that to red like that and what's nice with this is you, you don't have to repaint everything over and over again you could just maintain the texture underneath um, and Marcus Collins a really good friend of mine at when I was working at Rhythm and Hughes because they all like do matte painting at Rhythm and Hughes this is how they change stuff without affecting the texture so I, I, I kind of adopted that from them. So it's nice working in different places, even though, you know, matte painting, I don't do matte painting, but they needed concept artists and I didn't know that. Um, I just got a phone call uh, fr from them. So yeah, so this is one of the ways. Um, is that is that fine, guys? I wish I could hear you guys and s hear if things are okay, if things are good. and check okay okay you could you guys could see it okay so like the yellow for this what what my idea for this guy was I was thinking you know he is turned inside out you know because the yellow I think was more inside his clothing the green is outside green armor so I'm pushing him more inside out and this is the Liberace version I was talking about <laughs> So getting even close to the patterns inside, I would try to really understand maybe there's some stitching there, you know, going on. I would make these little brush patterns. Even though you can't see it, it sometimes I just do it just to maybe um, help with uh, inspiring more thought, I guess. Okay, and let me close that. I'll close. I'll start closing stuff, um, so it's easier to go through. Um, but yeah, thanks for the questions. Uh, I I always like the interactive life. So okay, here's an example of starting from the base uh, costume and showing where I want the purples. I think Charlie's costume in um, Thor: Dark World had some purples. And the cuts are kind of based on, uh, not the cuts of the design, but um, the cuts of the, the clothing. I, I looked at his, at that design and, and, and was trying to figure out, you know, because they made it and it looks amazing. I, I really like that costume and it, 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 it could be done. So maybe if I use the same kind of method of how they put that together and just use that as my as my pieces and just designed over that then this could work you know so that's uh that's kind of like the the methodologies that how you say it of of the thought process because you don't want to just design and it can't move you have to design based on what it does you know in, in the film like the Dora Milaje I know they had to move really crazily so I really patterned their costume to you know like a samurai costume like how that's built it's so like um, designed in a way that you could move because they're, they're, they're one, one of the most iconic, you know, warriors. So I kind of adopted that and tried to put it and make the Wakanda uh, warrior, you know, the Dora Milaje, be like a samurai. That's what's the thing that's going through my head. It's like, if they were never colonized, then they would probably be more popular than the samurai armor because they would be like, way back then um but of course no one knew they existed so maybe they, they wouldn't have been popular but that's just the the way i want to think so that i could make it as iconic as i can um yeah maybe that would be a, a, a next presentation uh you could i do both i think about the the design and I think about the the functionality and how you have to wear him. Uh, but some days, 
based on the story because in the script if you have a clear script and what it does already you kind of know to base your design off what they're gonna do you know like an ex example with the Dora Milaje um, and then um, that's why the collaboration with the people that ma make this stuff like the the um, how is it the master um, armor people I forgot how you call them um, uh, the builders and the set designers and you know they they get the design and then they kind of see which works and which doesn't work and but they s try to stick closely as much as they can to the original design because you know it was approved by um, by production Kevin Feige likes it the director likes it and as much as possible if they can uh, they stick as closely to it as we can and I think a uh, Marvel um, uh, Marvel really, um, I guess, uh, trusts us with the designs and stuff. So because you know we related to the, to the comic book a lot. So there's like a level of trust there. Mm. It's it's all really from Ryan and Charlie, head of visual development. They, they set the stage for it. Uh, you know. Huh? <laughs> oh, my cat is meowing. You guys wanna meet my cat real quick? This is November. Ah, November, say hi. He is my relaxing cat. Whenever I take a break, I just lie down, and he just goes on top of me, and I don't want to get up anymore. I just, he's purring right now. November, his name's November because he followed me home in November. So I said, oh, this is called November. And yeah, this cat's so cute. Okay, let me... Um, yeah, that's my lucky charm. <laughs> um, okay, uh, sorry. Um, seen, let's go. Uh, do you ever use photo textures, or is it always painting? I do use photo textures, um, uh, not in this painting, but in uh, like when I do creature design. Because when I was doing creature design, uh, I started off in special effects first, and uh, photo bashing. Uh, or photo montaging or collaging is is the way you do it right um, not the only way of course sketches are fine and there's no one way to do it so I try everything actually I even I even just design uh, I told you guys I, I would sketch stuff out because some other stuff uh, ideas come out differently when I sketch it and when I work on Photoshop it it stops some ways of thinking I can explain it like different mediums even watercolor if I feel like I'm stuck in this design I'd go into sketching and the sketching doesn't work I'll do watercolors if the watercolors doesn't work maybe zebra sculpting would work um, but luckily I never uh, it, it, sketching always seemed to be uh, the thing that helps me the most um, or, or pen and ink sketches and doing just blots of ink and just finding shapes yeah, there that's unique because um getting inspired by by uh of course there's also inspiration online with you know fashion and um it's a hip-hop uh, community or, or the rock and roll um, alternative you know it's like music everywhere um also inspire me uh new new artists that come up um inspire me even if it's not what I do, let's say if it's animation, like I'm watching movies, all, all of those are inspirations. Um, and everything pretty much is a remix. So I feel like I'm just putting them together and the filter is my filter. So it will always kind of be unique. So you almost want to look at the stuff that you really like and have that inspire you and then kind of filter it through your lens, right? Um, but that's hard you know it's, it's it's still hard it's not that easy when I say it that way I'm just trying to find a good um, a good way of expressing expressing how I think and it's chaotic there sometimes I go I go to sleep and and try to dream and then try to wake up and try to write it down and sketch it out um, especially if the design is it's difficult it 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 goes into your dreams <laughs> Pattern em embellishment. Um, pattern embellishment with the Dora Milaje. That really, 
I went detailed on that. I I cut out um, like a fine beading that I like from like African uh, imagery or um, or patterns or textures, and just form like a like a like a bracelet out of like the beads and just making my own thing based on that. It's almost like I'm actually like building it. Um, so yeah, it's, sometimes it does that, but not for all of it. I don't. Um, I just sometimes I just put um, I guess for the final product you do do that you know Ryan and Charlie and uh, you know, Andy and most everyone try to, their best to put as much detail as they can uh, and clear you know where it sits on the form on the clothing I'm just going through turning things off as I go um, yeah hopefully this is inform informative for you guys <laughs> Uh, let me see if I have time. I was, yeah, I am. I am. I'm going to try. Uh, here. Just going through it. Just turning off the stuff real quick. I'm trying to get to the point of all the crazy color ones that I had that I still want to show you guys. Um, okay. This is the stuff I showed previously. You're asking me how I work with visual development? Yeah, like talk about it, how you work with visual development and collaborate with costume design. Oh, okay, uh, in collaboration with costume design. Yes, uh, that is a really important collaboration. So um, what, what happens is the script comes in or no script or just the comic book and then we design the the costumes or the characters and then uh, uh, try to get approval and stuff sometimes like I said it starts way before e everyone is there and that's the kind of like the benefit of being at Marvel uh, just multiple projects all at the same time and uh, we get to get first you know first hand uh, um, first hand on the initial designs I mean Ryan with 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 Spider-Man he's he's like working on that before I even knew we had Spider-Man <laughs> so it's like it's really amazing and his stuff really so detailed and very well thought out um he also designed captain america's helmet by the way that he labor of love on that it's it's one of the best designed helmets uh for captain america yeah so so from there um it gets approval and then um collaboration with the costume designers and the costume department kind of see what works what doesn't work um, Ryan and Andy and Charlie, when Charlie was there, they used to, uh, they would go to the costume department, uh, take a look at the the clothing, and just see, um, you know, if it's if it's staying true to the comic book, to the design, and then work on ways to making it it um, good on screen. Uh, suggestions, uh, but we just work on the main characters, you know, uh, most of the time, uh, and. Um, Hold on, these are keyframes ready. Yes, so um, did that answer your question? Is that good? Okay, uh, sorry. I had to. So this is even louder, like a louder design idea. How would it look like? Um, uh, and, and this was very uncomfortable for me because it was really like just crazy. Uh, colors for me and it kind of feels like it doesn't match which screen can he see better IG or YouTube <laughs> I kind of could see both a little bit but I look down here a little often um, okay so this so taking those ideas and just changing the colors let me put this keyframe to the side I want to talk about keyframes later more keyframes ah I'm not in order here. <laughs> okay, here it is. So more um, that Liberace feeling, right? More blues. They wanted him blue. So I was trying more blue ideas uh, mixed with, um, uh, yeah, yellows and teal. Uh, and then I got the note that, you know, no, we want him just all blue. Um, what's nice with giving a variety of these, so, so from those color stuff to here, 
these were all like given in one meeting um, and and I went really green like versions of green but all green and maybe just like y yellow here which is still kind of like a part of green um, and then purples and and this yellow my banana suit this is one of my favorite ones because my symbolism for this is this was really turned inside out you know because of everything that's happened to him so I, I try to always put story into my design as much as possible because you know the, the torment he's feeling inside and you know his sadness he doesn't know which side he's gonna be if he's gonna remain good or bad uh, hence the you know the the lines uh, the horizontal lines and and I ex explained earlier that this is this is like my idea of his uh, like a family crest right that's why he had that big low key sign uh, chain that I was thinking and it slowly slowly turned into this little check mark um, so that that kind of is the meaning of that is is taking stuff from Asgard some elements of Asgard into his design so pretty much everything else turned into Sakar look for his new costume but I kept some of Charlie's in the design sense from his old costume um, so yeah this is um, my banana favorite banana suit <laughs> um, and usually this is where the crowd laughs and I can't hear you guys uh... okay uh, okay let me keep on going and then this this is the version so I I had closed it already. I had that banana suit very yellow and it and it turn and it goes to this this suit. So the the contrast with that is very stark. So this looks more blue than than usual because you're looking you were looking at a yellow um uh, costume earlier. So kind of like uh, I kind of like to play it that way to organize it that way sometimes. Uh just so they'll really see okay, I I did the blue and it worked really well. Uh purple inside. This is where everything kind of came together. Story-wise, same thing. The uh, the diagonal lines, cut lines, making him feel like he's uh, not uh, balanced. The purple inside uh, symbolizing his uh, mourning, um, and and the dark inside, just him being you know sad. But but you have a little sliver of hope right here. That's kind of like the story, right? Um, and even the little things from reaching back to his past in Asgard and he still holds that this heart you know it's like this heart his from his mom because he loves his mom so much you know so it's almost like he keeps that with him uh, wherever he goes he never lost it even though that big crest was this big if you look at his old designs it's this big and then it was relegated to this small because he was you know in going through his story his ordeal but he never lost uh, his love of his mom um, yeah, that's how I do my stories. Sometimes it gets it gets. Uh, I don't t say that much to people, but um, but yeah, that just for you guys, you know, to know how design ideas work, and I like doing stories within my designs. Not not all the costumes have that story, just him because I know the script. You know, so that was the final design, the final look approved, um, and then we went on with the helmets. Um, and you know Adam Ross uh, helped me uh, like bring this design to fruition in 3D, um, and then I a special effects shop for them to build. And building this from this angle is kind of hard because when we got the the like the uh, uh, work in progress images, it had like a certain bulk, and and I wanted really thin and and streamlined, and uh, you know. Andy was very critical in in, in having this uh, made really closely. Is you know how do you want it? You know, Anthony, you tell me how you want it, and we'll try to get it done. We don't know if they'll agree with it, but you know, it doesn't hurt to ask uh, to try. You know, so um, so I did turnarounds for this uh, here. Uh, let me see. Let me just go through some of these real quick just to show you guys. This is more like the photo real version. You know, this is where I took the old uh, costume with the right cuts, just to prove that it's it all can work because these are the normal. They, they've already done this before, you know. And I'm just just taking out some of the other pieces and 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 replacing it. Like this is what I was talking about. This is from the last costume, uh, kind of not exactly, but that's 
where the shoulder piece is and the other shoulder piece, you know. But I had to do it uh, this clearly so that when costume gets it, there's no question of where things are. And of course, things change, and that's okay as long as the feeling of the costume is still there. And then more uh, with a with cape. Taika really loved this cape because it's very different. Um, but uh, we ended up with this cape. And, you know, Hulk, I really love, the, they love this armor piece. Uh, I'm really happy. Andy, Andy is awesome because he would tell me how they react and stuff. Uh, it was just, like, that's the best feeling when you feel that kind of reaction. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> you should, uh, yeah, visit his Instagram. You know, he's, he's got some cool uh, uh, contest right now that's up. And then, of course, this one is my favorite. Uh, things like patterning. Uh, this is the extent of some of the patterning I would do, but if I really want to focus on the centerpiece, I would just do the, you know, really get the overall shape first, go inside and just really show where things start and end. So very clear design, um, very strong, very bold, you know, I because he doesn't need that armor. Like the initial idea is like, oh, Hulk doesn't need that armor, but, but it's really cool. Plus, <laughs> I think the symbolism for this thing is that He's really strong, and even if it's a piece that he just puts over his shoulder, like a metal piece, I think that was the initial, uh, 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 um, like task. Because what if it was just a big metal piece that he just put over his shoulder, say, "Ha, you know, I've got this over my shoulder. I don't really need it, but it's there." Um, but again, ty uh, uh, because um, because uh, Jack Kirby was my inspiration for this, I really tried to. Uh, make this centerpiece like all Jack Kirby when, while everything else is more like a gladiator this is what's gonna complement everything else so same with the colors I made it blue and shine almost it, like it doesn't even fit in in the costume uh, but the final design goes to Ryan Minerding he did an amazing job on that and you guys should really check it out I really went into that face because uh, I guess I had time maybe <laughs> Uh, this is not the high res version though the high res it doesn't really break up like that um anyway so that's one and uh and what was i uh gonna show you guys next was um oh there's more to his story uh but uh but it's okay let me let me get my low key so this is where things start to, you know, you have the design, the design's approved, and now we have to uh, work closely with the costume department, with the weapons department. I don't know if they're called weapons department or uh, specialty shops, sorry, specialty shops. Uh, I think it's Iron Head Studios and, and costume departments headed by Mize Rubio. Uh, I'm so bad with names sometimes, but I, I tell myself you know you gotta remember everyone that worked on it and it's good practice for me start remembering stuff because my brain gets scattered sometimes with all the ideas I want to do even when I'm not working that is the bad part the voices anyway here is a version of like the back views of the cape because they wanted to have ideas of how it could look like. Um, so we, we go into that, back versions, and then more more cape versions. But this time, this is uh, the um, the bug version, scarab, scarab version. Um, and, and yeah, it, it, was, it was so fun to do this. It's the pleats coming down like pleated because like, I wanted him to you know he still looks up to his brother maybe but not showing it so he'll do stuff like this uh, and then my turnaround so a little uh, faster done because we need it done right away and I do these lines uh, to, to make sure I, I match my design um, there front and back and the back uh, sometimes it's not uh, fully finished because we have to do this really fast you know uh, once it's approved then we go to another project we have two three things working at the same time so we have to like make these stuff faster but it's clear enough that you know when when they build it they'll at least have an idea where things could be 
and then he here is more um, with the cape this time yeah there's a we, we do think of like the front and back views um, overall even when we're doing the front piece design because that's really what you know more experienced designers do right everyone at Marvel thinks that way I, I, I guess I did a lot of turnarounds here <laughs> let me take these out okay B and I would just do like simple oh sorry like start off with a simple shape like this at least a nice base and then and then I start like okay just scribbling stuff or using the lasso tool uh, just to like make a shape because sometimes when you use the lasso tool uh, it it's able to make those sharp turns unlike um, the brush where it's more um, circular so I would take that bring it to the other side see if that's scarab enough you know like a Rorschach, Rorschach thing put, put this in a group on itself and then label it and then do another group on top and then and then from this I would use the lasso tool again sometimes not the lasso tool, the brush and just sculpt into that deleting what I think I don't need but again these shapes are not even planned I'm just like I'm just using the idea of act active and inactive side uh, sometimes I forget it but but like for here since I'm teaching I'm keeping aware like this side will be inactive okay so that will be just straight you know not so much activity <laughs> and then this side um, can can like grow plants in it <laughs> that's that's how my mind thinks like if this is a world in itself this is the underworld this is the the top part of the world I maybe there's plants that could grow up like this man this is embarrassing you guys probably won't follow me anymore <laughs> like, uh, but I guess this answers the question how do you just um, find inspiration I guess um, um, and I try to go into the deeper meaning of it like I, I love watching you know like like animal planet and and just microscopic uh, science looking at microscopic uh, documentaries about microscopic germs or insects and some of this come from that and if I don't know anything about it, like on Ant-Man I would just play documentaries while I'm designing the ants I'm just playing it playing and I learned so much from ants I don't know if you guys know but majority of the whole colony is is uh, is um, female and they drive the colony the males are just there for one thing <laughs> and then they die <laughs> so I was like what I thought the bigger ants were the male ants no even those are are female warriors and I was like wow what an interesting and, and, and it, sometimes it gets even horrific like they would have ants that their sole purpose is to hold food through the winter so they're like hanging from the ceiling and it's like aliens that you know their their belly or their is engorged they're um um not, not the belly but the thorax area i forgot what it was um but yeah and, and there will be a line of ants coming in and drinking off like they would throw it up and then the ants would eat it as they went through and then while i was watching that i was thinking man if if an alien comes here and they see us as, as ants and they make us do that then you'll see like humans <laughs> hanging from the scene and then oh man my ideas just start coming oh I should draw this out and blah 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 and then I and I start working I forgot about it and now I remembered it I should probably do that and do a short film about it short animated film so so it, so I had this version and I delete the other side and then this this is actually a really great way to um, to just save designs you know save designs this way meaning uh, designing it mirroring it so you see both sides and something I just saw something I just saw that I'm gonna do now when I was moving this thing to the side I just saw this and I'm like whoa maybe that could be cool and then pull it here and then merge it together as one and then use the uh, warp tool I love the warp tool but for some reason in this 
new iteration of a Photoshop or it's my computer so it's not working more in your process of active, and versus inactive. active and inactive sides okay uh, okay um, here. okay uh, how, okay we'll do a new design here and show that okay so the, another uh, place where I I uh, I'm taking the concept of active inactive is from when I was doing figure drawing and I learned rendering is an associates of art again and they would do something like this where uh, when when the light hits an object let's say you know it's a torso oh man right and then you have the chest uh, cast shadow And then the ab cast shadows for the abs. Maybe like the head has a cast shadow. Or arms. I should just mirror this. What am I doing? <laughs> uh, but um, oops. So even this has active and inactive sides in in all forms of you know like in nature you'll see this stuff and studying that stuff helps out too okay so so this is like another idea of active inactive side is when the inactive side is down here and then the active side is what's up here that's where the light is coming from so you're kind of pointing these strokes towards the light it doesn't have to always be towards the light but the light is up like above him so kind of like that uh, but a little nicer or you could think of the inactive side as a active side as the as a like soft like soft uh, side because something's happening there you know something like that and then the, and then you so this will be uh, active and then the inactive will be down here the cast shadow so this one idea to see that and then when you go into your design here um, uh, of course don't use it for everything sometimes it's needed when let's say you're, you're stuck or something so let's say um, for this design outside is the inactive everything's straight so I want everything like inside to be kinda you know crazy like that um, or or if again this doesn't work all the time or if the outside shape is really really active you know like really active like this uh, but cooler you know because and then maybe inside could be uh, like simpler or something like that and then you take that put it to the other side to see if it works and by the way I have my I have my flip oh shoot what happened okay uh, escape escape I have my flip key set so I could just press a button and it flips it and then I just check to see if it it fits or it works and if you know if not oh I need to make it more active maybe he could have this going in and then now the rhythms I'm trying to the abstraction I'm trying to see does that work it makes him look like he's squatting so maybe uh, that doesn't work yes you can that's a interesting way to think of it um, I mean it could be applied to many things it's it's really a, an idea of contrast and affinity you know it, it, again going back to like value like something really dark um, but I don't know how to use it for that yet I think with my brain it it r just lends to one side for me anyway being uh, but if you're able to do it that would be awesome to 
you know, learn. Like this side is is all furry, right? All like f fur, and then this side is straight. Because if I did this too for this side, I, it could look cool. See, it kind of looks cool, but uh, but then maybe if I did that, I'll really play that up so you could see that more. Like right, and then this uh, play it down a little bit if I want that armor to be the one that's um that's the star right you kind of choose yeah, like you're playing basketball there can't be like three superstar there, there can be but it's hard to maintain good relationship when there's too much superstars in one team uh, unless they're all team players then you know but Ah, so tool. Hold on, hold on a second. Let me, okay. let me. Uh, you know, no, keep that, keep that question real quick. I just want to show one more. Um, active and active. I, I know I showed it earlier. Sim, simple, but. Um, like. Even here, now when I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, that I could have made this more, active. This side. You know, more like this, and maybe, maybe something going down here. But then, then I'm I'm gonna muddy my main idea, which is really this line, these lines. And you know, it, it looks so much better on screen. Like you know, the costume department did like an amazing job to really make it look really good and better and better than my design. You know, it, I I was just the starter of it. Um, like they made it a, a darker or something and they took away this belt uh, maybe it caught too much attention you know I, I, I really like this belt you know, it just felt so unique um, but maybe it caught too much attention so it was made to just be blue like this mm -hmm. which which makes sense you know like, and, and, and then they made it what you're doing by itself. why was Loki's predominant color change from green to petroleum petroleum What's, what is petroleum color? Is that blue? Wait. I'm not sure. What was the question you, you had uh, earlier? Okay. So anyway, hopefully that c covers a little bit of the active and inactive sides. I, you know, what's the clearest way I could show it really is is designing a creature, you know um is really how I understood it more especially creature for games because sometimes this, this is my mannequin for creature <laughs> I do this rawr, to start off of no, not anymore I mean this is I'm just doing this fast um, so even this like okay everything is is not so active or inactive but I'm gonna make this part active see the silhouette you know there's a lot of people out there that make really amazing silhouette designs um, what I've learned through the years especially working games because I like doing shapes and what's what's that piece there what's that piece um, I like knowing the piece uh, first and then and then making the shape right uh, and at least I know the story of the piece. But little by little, I learned to also. This is from Kevin Chen, actually. He he got me my first game job at NCSoft, and pretty much taught me a lot in character creature design. You know, he he heads up a school called Concept Design Academy, um, and they're online now. But that he's one of the best uh, character designers. Um, anyway, he uh, uh, like he. I learned from him to like really push your shapes because in coming from special effects and going into games, I was just so subtle with my with my silhouettes, and all the crazy detail would be inside a simple silhouette because that's usually what you want for you know the practical uh, effects is you don't want a crazy silhouette because no one could wear that then it will have to become a CG character and back then you know uh, we weren't CG characters weren't usually used so much no they were used a lot what am i saying 
maybe it's just so we could do the job you know so uh but still come up with great design and and there's a difference when the the creatures are in front of you you know the actors could act through it uh but now people are so used to with cg stuff and there's ways to show off that and and you get even more creative you know like the hulk in thor ragnarok that's amazing or thanos man thanos looked so amazing anyway you're <laughs> I got sidetracked. Let me try not to get sidetracked. All right, shapes inside, active and inactive. You know. Like that. Even the idea of the yin and the yang. Oops, I can't do it. Uh, yin yang. I This idea, uh, Marshall Evandroff, I had that. Um, talk on um, Draftsman, you know, Proco with Proco.com, Stan, and Marshall didn't remember me, <laughs> That's but I remember a lot of what I, I took from his class before. When he said the yin and the yang, and a little bit of the light in the dark, a little bit of the dark in the light, and that's almost like, you know, that idea of active active inside because it's moving you see you could actively see this is moving and outside is is calm you know so you could use that concept inside here too but not the move i mean not the movement is in circular but you could try to move the eye in you, you know it's interesting uh i start uh i do both i do um actually i do my line in pencil mostly and then I do silhouettes in Photoshop, and I try um, like, like okay, I, I get the the description. When I get it, I do a silhouette shape stuff, and then I do line. But I tend to go line first because that's how I learned first, and that's where you can't hide with line. Like I I have to know that shape, you know. And then um, I have to say though, in terms of um, efficiency and getting something done quickly i had to go with line first so i finish the design and then and then i go into value of those lines like do a do like um mask and then and then i do shapes on top of that so it's like i'm trying to find a medium between both uh but with creatures it i always seem to always go silhouette um but if you know your silhouette very clearly already because because um, this is just me, okay? This is not all artists. Like, when I do my line and my silhouette is clear and I like it, then I'll, I'll do like a, like a, uh, like a clear silhouette, let's say a, a dragon or something. And then I know this shape is going to be this simple. And then it, it could even be faster to finish. I'm also using the color dodge not the color dodge, sorry, just the dodge tool. Um, a friend of mine, um, uh, John Donahue, um, he, uh, he he does stuff like this, or, or maybe he does it, not do it anymore, but um, just to get a quick um, light side and the lights hitting it uh, without like really painting on it. Uh, yeah, and then the active, inactive within that, right? The, the yin and the yang, some of the, and that, that goes with like doing patterns and stuff. Um, I, hopefully you guys are enjoying the, the ideas because I'm not doing any final paintings here. I could, I could put all, put all this in one, uh, like a PDF or something. Uh, and, and, and just, I guess go into more like systems if you guys uh, would like that. Um, talk about contrast and contrast and affinity and, um, um, active inactive sides um, value structure like like the uh, the stuff I've learned from other teachers you know all this stuff is not my idea it's just my trans translating of what I've learned um, and hopefully you guys understand because I had to take multiple teachers and they all taught the same thing but in their own way and I uh, you know sometimes you don't understand it and then later on you understand what they're saying and it, it actually maybe because your mind matured a little more then you you understand it you know I even the concept of this yin and yang in a keyframe where where majority you want a dominant one like let's say 
the white is dominant then then you know and then the black shape is the darker shape is here and then you have a little bit of dark in the light and a little bit of the light in in the dark to start off of just to see your shape you know like um, oops and and it could become abstract you know very abstract to start off with uh, in terms of if you want to do shape right for You know, like just seeing that, um, maybe that could be something, and then like a like another silhouette here. If you want to see the full picture, and and then this could mean anything. Now that silhouette could be anything. Uh, maybe I don't know what it is. This is the part that's awesome working with silhouettes is you don't know what it is yet, and you could keep this idea for later. What's happening here? And everybody would have their own like translation and I love like showing it to my kids what are you seeing what are you seeing you know and and it's it's with that value structure I was talking about when I with with that talk with me and my wife I, I taught her this first like just black and white how would that look like when you're copying something and deciding what goes in the dark and what goes in the light and then when you do your own thing you kind of adapt the way those cinematographers put things together and and do it on your own stuff um you know uh, one amazing artist that you guys should look at is alex mandrajiv um he is also in lightbox and this is how he starts not all the time just i just love the way he he makes shapes and and the shapes just has a lot of like impact to them um and then the subject matters it's just it's a bit dark mm, not all of it of course but there, there's something about the mystery that he he puts out uh, yeah and you know we'll, we'll do a we'll do a collab together so if you guys ever uh want to join us one of those days you know he he's part of my discord so you can say hi to him uh i'm gonna i'm gonna make a room for him too so yeah uh shape design um also very important there's like a whole class here i should reserve this for <laughs> The next time, uh, are you guys enjoying it so far? <laughs> Let me see who's here. Justin times two thousand. Is the audience for Loki adults or kids? I don't know. I think. Are you talking about the my my stream? Uh, you would love to see the keyframes you have mentioned. Keyframes. Oh, you mean, you mean Alex's keyframes? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe Alex's. Let no, me see. Not that one. I don't know. Uh, keyframes that I mentioned. You mean, um, sorry, let me see. Let me see. Uh, uh, let me just go finish this, I guess, back to... This is how our minds work, huh? Just ask a question, answer the question. Maybe you should, uh, you know what? I like it this way. Uh, this is just casual, you know, ask questions. I answer it, right? We, if you want, you could just fast forward, go back. You know, maybe I could timestamp it for some of the topics I talk about and maybe later just compile it into one thing and have additional material for you guys. Um, um, I have a gum road, which is not quite set up yet. It just used to have my Magic the Gathering cards I used to do. Uh, the you have put to the side. Oh, the keyframes to the side. Okay. All right. Anyway, this is, this is, okay. I'll get to that. I'll just turn this off real quick. Some more. I did a lot of, um, and then I even, I even did a turnaround of the helmet because they were having trouble with the helmet. I Because I do also do ZBrush, so I would adjust the helmet myself too. Um, and, and the ears coming out, that was before when they first made the helmet, the ears were being covered up. And it there was something that was, was interesting about it, but with the ears showing, it just felt lighter. 
and it felt more like that's Loki. Loki's never armored up, you know. And since he, <laughs> see, I put a story to it again. Since he's not, um, like um, like a like a warrior, he needs to be able to to sense everything around him. So he really needs his ears not being covered up. <laughs> and then I would make uh, these helmet notes for um. For uh, our, our character modeler, Adam Ross, awesome guy. He's everyone's working from home now. <laughs> yeah, see the sharpness of this. I wanted that sharpness, and initially they didn't have that uh, sharpness. And the helmet is my favorite part because that's like straight from the comic book of just just more. Um, um what's this um i use jack kirby shapes more and try to modernize jack kirby shapes and if you notice i use the same kind of themes on my um on um hulk's armor so i i i, I found a shape uh that i like so let's say i have uh jack kirby's work up right and i'm looking at the shapes but i'm trying to find my shape but feel like Jack Kirby. So I was doing these shapes. Does this feel good? No, no, Jack Kirby has worse the active and inactive sides of his design. Uh, he probably doesn't think that way, but um, but eventually the more you look at it and the more you're like, wow, these shapes are amazing. Like how did he come up with these ideas? Because he's never seen it before, you know, and I'm just standing on, you know, shoulders of giants here and just trying to figure out what you know how are these layering going on and if you're going to ask me what kind of sh you know the reference i have is just all jack kirby stuff that's all i had up to get this even in here maybe that maybe that's why this one my favorite you know i've never had really an in-depth talk about loki um as this so you guys are getting it firsthand <laughs> it's like even these shapes right it, it wasn't there and i had to had to get the right shapes you know it can't be bare i feel that's not a that's not a jack kirby uh, aesthetic ah oh, man it's, it's, this brings me back to how fun it was doing this all the challenges involved and you know um andy thank you for uh for trusting in me with, with this design it's like he just let me roll with it it's awesome and yeah, so that notes and then Loki helmet, more notes. And even if you notice, even the space inside with the pinching, take the pinch away. So uh, this, where is it? I can't even see where it is exactly. If this, there's a difference, take away this pinch. I don't even remember what pinch is that. Oh, oh there it is. This. I see it. So I would be really aware of this. See this kind of gradation. That means the model is turning a certain way. Um, luckily, you know that's why you need to learn ZBrush too, so you know how things turn and how things sit in space better. So that's something's happening there. So I said, no, I want that like straight, right? Uh, is it possible? You know, not, you know, I, I, whether I want it or not, it doesn't matter if they can't do it. You know, so guys, my phone is gonna die soon, so this i'm going live on the phone maybe i should stop it so that i hopefully i could save this because I, I was supposed to stop my instagram live uh, before an hour happens because then this this won't come out um i can can you view the screen on it okay i could i could show you guys real quick with the screen but i have to turn this back oh you mean you just want the screen up like this that's the Loki helmet turnaround, but um, I can't really do it this way because you guys can't see what's around me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not not like it's a Marvel thing. It's just my my notes and stuff and and uh, my bank statements and my mortgage I have to pay and. <laughs> Or manually cancel the update. What? YouTube from your phone. 
Oh, I see, I see. They're talking like you could watch from YouTube and IG, because IG I'm talking like directly. But then the YouTube stuff is a bit slow. Anyway, so so this is coming up with these kind of designs and making sure the helmet uh, goes well, and even though even making sure the cut lines from outside of the helmet and even inside the helmet, you know, if if they could make it like this, if it's possible, um, and then uh, coming with the front view, side view. And this is where I really, you know, learned to be clear with what I want to say. Uh, like the, the size of this helmet get wider from original image. And, you know, Andy was really helping me with this. And it's almost like I was being trained to lead in a way. Um, we would like to keep the silhouette of the ears showing if possible. That's that's Andy saying that to me like, hey, this is how you should say stuff, right? Um, and making sure it's clear a line showing it there and that um and then raising this and i was trying to explain here like this is four points you know not five points because i think they had five points and it was doing this kind of buckling that 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 i didn't like so if possible can you make this go kind of taper this way and then because i i really like the rhythm going into the face and maintain all these rhythms um I guess I am really uh, I like a rhythm a lot because I, I love to dance when I was younger. Now my body's like can't do it anymore. It could do it, but it's not pretty. <laughs> so and uh, so so again showing showing the rhythm going in here and into the eyes and down here. So all this kind of follows that. And even this, I I feel like this was such an accidental lucky design that it came up you know sometimes you're not even thinking about this you're just throwing stuff around and hoping something looks good uh, and hoping your maturity with your design sense just feels like uh, that you're able to see it you know some people can't see genius when they see it right um, not not sorry i'm not a genius i'm saying like when they see like when an artist is amazing let's say <laughs> um i don't know I don't know why Alex comes into my mind again, uh, is, it, or even like Jared, Jared, you know, Morantz, his 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 costume design and his um, creature design stuff is just like wow, you know. Can't wait for you guys to see Shang Chi. It's just it's gonna be yeah, amazing and stuff. Um, but yeah, like, like, yeah, like his like sometimes it looks all the same for some people because they can't see that oh, within that design sense. There's a lot of things going on. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, it's like, um, like he, uh, and Alex's stuff has a lot of like, like emotion in it that, that I like to see. And it's like, wow, that's amazing. And I don't think I was able to see that. Um, and when I said genius, I, I think mainly I was thinking of Craig Mullins, um, or, 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 uh, Justin Sweet. Those are the two like heroes of mine when I was younger, like looking at, art and getting inspired there's more you know there's more like um like of course frazetta behind me um dean cornwell uh rockwell yeah, all, all of those inspirations to kind of get to where i am um again it's it's all luck feels like it uh with of course with hard work um but i got lucky i was a introduced to those artists when i was in associates of art that was really a nice hub of knowledge um, where I've met a lot of my friends. Anyway, here we go. Uh, back to the helmets. <laughs> uh, I guess I just want to tell you guys what, you know, what, what all the inspirations come. I don't want it to sound like I am, you know, it, it, this is easy or, or, or it's just out of nowhere. You know, it just, no, it's just from everything I've seen and all the remixes I'm doing in, in my mind. Like, you know, what if I painted you know, a creature in the line decker style, you know. So here's another example of trying to tell, explain where things curve, you know, because because with this one, it's not, it's flat. It goes like this, but I want it to go uh, like, like more like that, right? Like that's the, that's the cutout I, I wanted. So it I could say it, it really is a big um 
going into these little details now. So here, ears are not showing. If possible, to show the ears more like this because it, it has an elegance to it um, that pushes him. And to me, you know, Loki is, is very elegant. And his elegance will will mesmerize you. And then, so yeah, he's that's why I think he's one of the best characters. Um, same with Thor. Thor's arc from the first movie all the way to Endgame. It's very compelling. Side view, more side view stuff. Even the under view I wanted to see just to make sure that we are getting the right separation here and how it sits on the brow and how far it goes here. So this is an actual um, Tom Hiddleston scan. So I could actually work from, you know, real life but this 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 came from the FX studio uh, iron iron something Jose Jose Fernandez another amazing sculptor artist designer um, okay and then then we have the model that I first painted on it started from here first before we sent it out this was working closely with Adam Ross um, and then explaining how the shape sits on top and what is the shape where the corners are because in, in the beginning it was more like curvy and, and doesn't have the angles and um, at, right the active inactive size the layering I had to make sure the layering was there it's not just one piece you know uh, Thor um, Loki's a complicated character he has a lot of layers you know <laughs> And here we are back here again. So, okay, now to the keyframes, right? Um, and I will, I can take more questions now. Okay, um, someone's asking, what do you recommend to better our design? Recommend to better your design. Um, I think uh, there's there's a lot of ways, right? Um, which I. I don't know off off the bat right away, but as I speak to someone, or or you're collaborating like in a brainstorming session, the ideas kind of go back and forth, and then your design gets better because you have other perspectives from other people, and then that helps out. That's one way to help you better your design. Um, also, just um, it's hard it's it's hard to say i think that's the first thing that came to mind yeah coming up with the more unique design i think those other things i was showing you thinking about the active inactive sides having like rules for yourself like all right i'm gonna just do purple just purple and pink let me see how that works and it'll be difficult right um I think that's how I would explain this. You got to do the stuff that's difficult for you that you don't want to do or you feel like this is a stupid idea, you know. Sorry, guys. Just drink some water. Yeah, and just um, just just like uh, listen to that voice, I guess, that, that wants you to try these things. And if that voice is not there, you can always uh, do like ink ink blots or look at the sky. This seems so weird, right? But this is what I do sometimes. Just just find shapes, and that seems like, like an interesting shape. Let me try it. You know, if that works, or um, um, get inspired by other artists online. Um, look at already made designs, like like garbage trucks or robotics designs that it could inspire you everything's more inspiration um, but to be a true designer is you use that as an inspiration you don't copy it exactly because then you're not trying to design something like remixed from it um, but nothing is going to be unique really you're still trying to find that um, common thread that people will also enjoy it um, but for yourself you got to experiment with stuff that people might not even like. It could be so weird, you know, and you keep that uh, shape language in your sketchbooks and you could look at it back later after a year or even 
a week and then you might find something else in it um, that's one way I think I, I I do you know to to push myself do I have a sketchbook here I, I kind of want to show a sketchbook now um, Great questions, guys. These are all great questions. Uh, my wife is writing it down so I can remember it for later. So maybe I could do like a better, you know, like like a more cohesive presentation with, with just focusing on each one so you guys have a place to go to to remember it. Um, and because, you know, my, my stream of thought right now when I, when I say it, it might be all kind of uh, topsy-turvy or, you know, you can't understand what I'm saying. But I, I hope uh, I hope I'm explaining it well enough. Um, okay. Thank you, Justin Times two thousand. I appreciate that. Um, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, I inform you guys well enough. <laughs> one man. No, it's not one man. I'm, I'm my department that I'm in is uh, the visual development team at Marvel Studios. So we're like, um, like there's six of us. That's the main guys and gals. So it's um, Ryan Minerding, the head of the department. And he's like a VP of creative visual development. And then next is Andy Park, who supervises a lot of the shows, director of visual development. And then there's Jackson Zay, who's uh, supervising uh, a lot of the streams and, and movies and then there's Rodney Fontabella, fellow Filipino uh, that's also a supervisor um, he is working on some of the other streaming shows uh, which we can't wait for you guys to see it's, it's going to be so amazing and then after him there's Yana um, uh, Yana, how did I say her last name? I, I forgot, sorry Yana uh, I've been saying her name so wrong before. I would say I thought it's Jaina or Jana, um, but yeah, she is like our, our newest uh, person on the team, and she's amazing. So good, check out her work. And then there's me, you know. So I'm just another, you know. I'm she's senior visual development artist, and I'm senior visual development artist. So that's uh, that's pretty much my my role, you know, in in this department so just trying my best to come up with stuff and hopefully get lucky that um ryan or andy give me you know some some awesome stuff to work on um and, and working with you know jackson is also awesome and he's my roommate uh by the way and i kind of miss uh working with him because we're all like at home now um but don't get me wrong at home is amazing too I, i'm with, with my kids every day it's so cool with my wife and now I got her to do the stream. You guys, if you have a chance to check out our my live stream with her because I wanted her to explain how she got, you know, for her for her drawing to get really good in just like six months. She's she was able to really um understand it was it was a struggle, of course, for someone who's never drawn before. You know, so I, I was just so proud of her. So I, I I was thinking maybe there's something we could do together and help other you know artists out there that's that's beginning or are frustrated because she went through a lot of that stuff and I wanted her to talk to people about it and and which of the techniques we're talking about stuck to her. You know, it's it's fundamental to everyone. Most artists know this stuff. Um, but yeah, she's oh Maggie Maggie Chan oh thanks for being there uh this she's saying you did amazing I'm glad she'll 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 I have some videos of her drawing and uh, I'm gonna put that up in this channel I, I want her to make her own channel you know um so that because I'm sure she'll get more people <laughs> following her than me because you know it's 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 such a cool thing to see someone becoming like an artist and uh well she's always been an artist i mean she cooks so well i feel like she could have been culinary expert or something um uh and and just but she's never drawn you know she's she likes fashion that kind of stuff yeah and um and uh uh yeah but um somebody I, I don't your know. daughter should do a makeup makeup artist class just not during any meal time uh, <laughs> you know about my daughter loving the who's who said that Kim C. Kim C. Oh, thanks for saying she is so addicted she stopped now doing that and now she's into uh, Harry Potter <laughs> it's like she watched it like over and over 
yeah but she's into harry potter and then she really loves a uh, monk like she watches that over and over again i watched that over and over again it's just something that i like and um and now she's doing animation all right guys for instagram my battery is like five percent can i can i have the charger um Please. Yeah, and I think I have a plug here somewhere. So, no, it won't. It's gonna hit your face. Oh, All right, let me try to plug this in. On. Ah, I don't really have a stand for this. Okay. Uh, just What is this thing? I pull it out and everybody turns off. What is this plug-in? Should I pull this out? No, don't do anything. Uh, no, no, I think it's just the hard drive. Don't do anything <laughs> the hard drive. No. I, no, I mean the external hard drive. <laughs> I think, you guys, I have to pull this out. No, okay, don't do it. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Nothing's going to happen, I hope. Pull. Three, two, one. Uh, Alright, anything? I don't know. Okay, nothing. It is a delay. Alright. Oh! Alright, there it is. Alright, oh. Let me put this up a little bit. So. Uh, so you guys don't see the mess. Okay, there. Okay, it's plugged in, so I'm not going to go bye-bye in this one. <laughs> is there something you believe... This is a, a question from Instagram Live. Is there something you believe you lack that you believe will make you a better character designer? Or is color silhouette, you mentioned earlier, your biggest obstacles right now? Um, no. I mean, yes, there's a lot of big obstacles, uh, even... That's that's not the one technique that's gonna help you with everything. Um, um, there's all you know the drawing classes like go to proco.com and they have really uh, awesome drawing classes there that you could do and you know schoolism has really good classes to learn how to paint. Um, in in design wise, a silhouette line your line is important, um, but I guess the main really most important one is story for me. So knowing uh, what the story of the character is about will determine what um, shape the sword could be or what shape the helmet could be. You know, what if they use the helmet for stabbing the, you know, the giant they're fighting and how could that look like, you know, uh, it should be really big. And then the skill of the character will inform you on what they need in their body. It's almost like the tools of the trade. If you're a carpenter, you have saws and you know, and hammers. And if the carpenter has happens to be a warrior, <laughs> you'll have a bigger hammer. I don't know, like silly stuff. Sometimes thinking of, of really silly stuff helps push the idea, and the story gets even more fascinating. Um, that's why in the Philippines, with all the you know Filipino folklore and stuff, it's just so fascinating. And even Jack and the Beanstalk for me when I was younger was just wow, you know. Uh, a, a little plant that grows up really big goes up to the sky and then you know you this little kid goes up there and it's a giant living in the clouds it's just how the giant be held up with the clouds <laughs> you know it's like stuff like that and but it stuck sticks to your head or when i was really younger and i was in the bathroom you know you're taking a a, a, a dump and you looking at the cracks on the walls because and then making shapes of that <laughs> um i was really young i was like two um uh, that's that's what I remember with some of the stuff, um, but I don't know if that makes you a better designer. Uh, what I think what it is is knowing what you like, and not really comparing yourself with other designers. We try to feel and see what design passions you like, right? The stuff you like, and trying to remix that into uh, how you see things in the world. I think is the best way to do it. And once you feel you don't, um, how do you say, have to compare yourself, which is kind of hard. You always do. 
and sometimes you do have to compare on how um, finished work of professionals look like and that's really the goal you have just don't make it get into your head and make yourself think you're you suck you know right you're bad um that that is easier said than done and i know i still have that struggle um something that struggles with your efficiency too because you're so inundated by the idea of of um impressing someone let's say or oh, I, I gotta get this approved that your design suffers so it's almost like you need to get your mind mindset in a positive light um even with all the negativity going on you know especially as a beginner as a professional you're kind of used to the stress you're used to getting uh your your stuff uh not approved over and over and over again that ah oh, when it gets approved you're like whoa it got approved <laughs> that's that's awesome and you're like uh, but never think of it in a bad way you know the best advice one of the best advice that i got when i was working in special effects was from alec gillis uh owner of adi he had told me that um uh two things i think um that when when he's like art directing or he's uh overseeing how the design is going if they get 60 or 80 percent even just 80 percent you should be really happy with it you know so sometimes i tell myself if i just get 80 percent of what i want on the board i should be i should be happy even though i'm not but i, I just this is good enough or 60 percent, and then i'll just leave it and come back and look at it some more you know and try other ways and then overlap that on top of this and then see if that does anything and the other thing he said was was even if your stuff wasn't approved but they saw that that's the direction they don't want to go and then at first i was like oh that sucks i didn't do it's so bad that they don't want to go that direction but no that means you've closed that door and we don't have to search there anymore and that that's i never thought of it that way like then that gives you this you know even though you're not getting your approvals but you 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 still did a really good design in a certain direction that they didn't think of um and they don't want to go that direction it's it still helps the team you know it's still a a team a team effort you know marvel studios the whole marvel studios makes these movies not just one person um yeah um, uh, hopefully that that works <laughs> efficiency and control with details you came art uh i think i have to can can you write this down i'll try to answer this later this scene the 80 60 percent goes back to my first question about efficiency and control with details because that is a balancing act um even if i say uh draw with line first i guess i, I guess you, uh, you want an answer that's very definite right like how i do it um it, which i do it multiple ways but i think what works for me the most is drawing in line first clearly the doing a mask with the values of each each part and doing multiple values of each like maybe start with one just dark value and then pulling up the lights pieces of it uh from there uh for example i here let me do a really quick drawing here so this thing will have Okay, so this thing was drawn like this. Like, oh wait, not this thing was drawn like this. I drew Hulk first, right? With nothing, with no clothes except for like shorts. This is how you could get really efficient. So you draw Hulk with nothing on except his shorts, right? And now you know where the body starts and ends. Uh, make sure your anatomy is correct. Make sure your rhythms are going well. And some of this is, is not correct because sometimes the feeling is lost when it gets too correct. So you kind of want to push your form a little more. All right, so I just draw him down. And then I paint him up green and get the volumes ready to go. And then I go into my first major um, centerpiece, which is going to be this. This is the story I want to tell this shape 
Where did that come from? Is it interesting enough? Do you want to know more about this? Um, and clearly show its, you know, its uh, uh, Jack Kirby aesthetic. And under underneath this is um, like more of a gladiator uh, Hulk from, you know, um, oh my God, I can't forget, uh, from, from Planet Hulk. And the the artwork in the comic book is is so good too. I think, I think a Filipino drew it or does, it came up with the story of Planet Hulk. I'm sorry, I, I don't remember the name. Um, but anyway, that that theme for that would go into here because it's it it's kind of derived from that, right? Um, so I do that, render that up, render this up. Uh, but this time you just see the green uh, and. And some of the like the pant pieces while I'm working up everything, uh, but I start with that that line drawing first because um, I already know Hulk is gonna be this. Uh, now if now the shape silhouettes are here, I'll be doing this. I'll be trying different shape silhouettes, just black, not black, but uh, the color, the local color, you know. And then I do another layer, and then I do. Um, this is not always the best way to work, by the way. Some some of the some of the things we have to design just require so much just exploration and pushing the shape so much that you know. But for this particular piece, this one comes in. I paint that all metal first, and then on top of that, then I put in that red on top of that, and then that goes into like a shape exploration. So shape exploration this way or this way if that was cloth or this way or go this way you know what or should it be should it be like like this design uh, motif right should I put that here and that was another idea I was doing and I was thinking oh it was competing with the shoulder and it was all so heavy over here so you know what maybe what could balance this out is is the is the uh, awesome looking axe or something and it'll balance it out you know um, that, that's the idea for, for this design and oh sorry um yeah and then i wanted to soften him up a little bit with cloth you know will that work and i didn't think it was going to work um because you know maybe they have no armor that fits him there i, I don't know some stories i t t tell myself did that answer did that is that a good answer with the efficiency again everybody you can work the way you think you're efficient but you could try out this way try out the shape way where you do the silhouette of him real quick and then just fill that whole shape together while you still have your line uh, drawing up here. Um, uh, yeah. Question. Uh, it said, why blue for the Sakaar costume? How did he go from green to blue? Green to blue? Mm. I gave myself a story for that, but I think um, the r I don't really know the real reason. That was coming from... I think it's from the from Taika. Taika wanted him blue, maybe because he's sad. He's blue, you know. Um, and or, or no, that could. I mean, of course, it, it, one idea leads to another idea. It could be from so many sources. Like, like it, maybe, maybe because um, I remember with one of my pieces where it's not fully blue. It's just like a little piece of blue. I think on the shoulder piece I showed you, and they liked that blue. They were like, that blue seems cool, and then goes through time and time and then one person goes i think it's taika i want him all blue you know yeah because she's saying uh, i don't know kimber said that um even if it's at later time uh because the color changed from green to blue because everything i've seen is still has a green base so what was the reasoning for the color change I, one of the reasons i know um aside from i think it's taika who wanted blue is he has to feel more uh, showy like a peacock right uh, and and he should look rich and he is part of the Sakaar um, um, what do you call that uh, um, what do you call those people that follow like a, a, a rock star his um, no the the group of other artists that fo what <laughs> no there's a better way of saying uh, the word uh, his entourage his entourage right uh, he is the uh, uh, is is Grandmaster's entourage, and and since it's in Sakar, all the colors there are bright. It's all Jack Kirby. There it is. I remember now. Finally, 
it's Jack Kirby. Everything was Jack Kirby. Even the colors were Jack Kirby. Um, he is. This is Taika's love letter to Jack Kirby. If you watch the special features, he talks about it, and we had to really maintain that you know this is gonna look this way. It was jarring in the beginning for me anyway because I'm not used to like really crazy colors, and I'm so thankful for the experience because it really you know put me in that in the, in the headspace and how to solve this problem. Um, you know, with with you guys with your art, it's it really feels like more problem solving i know rendering it still feels like a, a game you're playing instead of playing an app on the phone it's like how does this render goes and you're trying to find out a certain pattern you know a certain formula to to kind of latch onto first because mm. that, that that was my experience before with other painters is there like a fun you put the local color first and then dark uh value and then light like that's the pattern Local color, dark value, then light. Don't mess with the pattern. Um, uh, Paul Christopher, another good friend of mine, he's amazing, another amazing artist, just way better than me. Uh, he, uh, uh, he, he, we would be landscape painting, and he would say that to me, like, okay, m you know, the brightest or, or uh, saturated color, and then you put, I don't know if it's more saturated when you go in the dark, but local color dark and then light and it just stuck to my head okay let me try to do it this way not like i always follow it but i, I try to do it um uh you know as much as i can um uh, where was uh sorry my train of thought it's like yeah. shh so that's the, the question you answered the question sakar costume green to blue oh sakar costume yeah yeah, yeah. so there's someone's asking uh what you often use do you often use 3d model to help your work uh, not as often. I I need to get back to it because for uh, Ant Man, I was using three models for all all the ants, you know. And some of it I, I painted when I kind of understood it because of the three D model helped me understand uh, the angles. Um, and and we had time. Uh, Charlie when was leading that show and he was like, uh, you know, just just do it as detailed as you can like photo real you know um and that's when i use 3d models um oh sorry i almost forgot ian joiner when i was thinking about uh, 3d models ian joiner is another uh you know like a, a, a mainstay in our team visual development and he is like also a supervisor leading a lot of different shows sorry ian i told you i didn't forget though it came back <laughs> check out his uh his instagram the modeling he's done for like uh the designs for 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 captain marvel like all all the kree soldiers or scrolls like everything you know was awesome you know it, it's based off andy's costume design for captain marvel so so see how it works this is a team like everybody inspires each other uh sometimes you get the final design and sometimes you don't but you should always know that um the journey is is all together you know um like like with dr strange it had initial designs that they liked and then carla ortiz you know like finished uh, the design um and and she made it so much better it, it, it's not even you know comparable i i did like like five six like directions or something for it um but yeah yeah that's always a uh, awesome uh, working with the amazing team and and really um trust uh, uh supervisors that give you trust to to take the you know design ahead um, your question, uh, when you do art sheet do you ever do characters in 45 degree pose that that's only front or only front and back views uh here let me take off my glasses first i'm not used to i don't wear this as often and uh so this it makes me dizzy <laughs> Um, sorry, uh, do I always do three quarter views? Like 45 degrees. Now I can't read uh, <laughs> my Instagram chat. When you, when you do art sheet, do you ever do characters in 45, pose, 45 degree poses that only, or only front and back views? Uh, I, this, I guess this image becomes the 45 degree that I use for you know my reference when I do the front and side. Um, yeah, just like you know, like Loki's is also like forty-five degrees, kind of. 
yeah so it's always good to design them like this first so you could see um actually no i take that back because i i like doing just head on and and uh, doing mirroring and then trying it out in 45 degrees if it works or uh, the other way around i could do it this way and then if i'm struggling with the three quarter and i have to understand how it looks like from the front then i do that um it's it's really knowing your um i guess weapons of choice for the particular problem is what i feel like most artists with these questions that you're asking uh it's almost like you're still finding the the right uh pokemon to use you know to, for a particular problem so if you think of it that way you're just gathering more information and, and um but the ones that that become like more tried and true in the industry is is what prevails um but there there are some people that are able to make other things work and you're like wow you know when, when you see that you want to try it out and when you try it out it doesn't work for you then um because they've been you know developing that skill for a long time and you gotta remember where your experiences lie what what happened to you in your life that you could pull from you know and, and no one else will have the, that experience but everyone will feel that same experience like your sadness your your joy and all that stuff uh but the visuals that you see or the smells you experience in you know a street market or whatever it, it's your own so try to use that in your design um i know it, it sounds very um what's the word like a symbol more symbolic and not not really pattern oriented like structure but i gave you guys a, a lot of different ways right i talked about that i talked about this about other ways of inspiration and trying to be unique in your voice um and and you could look into your childhood and even the pain that you felt or whatever uh, challenges could could lead to um giving a good emotional gesture to your to your pieces um yeah Well, definitely for the full timers, they are um, they could do everything. You know, um, some better than others. You know, um, like Jackson Zay, he was mainly an environment artist, and he had some characters. Uh, when when visual development uh, was in its, its in infancy, I guess he he came in, and there was more chances for him to learn uh, character designers and from like amazing artists like Ryan and Charlie already and you know Andy so uh, he learned on the job and um, and got better and better and now he can do everything so something like that like you come in you learn you get better um, and and it's him he has his way of thinking it's, it's really design is the part that's really important um, you may have the best rendering skills but if there's no um, like a um, um, if there's no uh, uh, semblance, I guess, of, of design that you've been doing on your own ideas, then uh, maybe it's a little harder to get into a design uh, um, group. Uh, but then you you never know um, how you know how uh, how do you say it? it's like everyone has their own like design sense and it fits. It, you could fit in with with different um, industries. I think I mean there's so many designers uh, in like architect architecture or even designing a car like I look at those designers too you know and I try to remember their names so I could follow them and get inspired and maybe use the ideas they put into their um, their machines or robots into my design but but instead of copying the visual language of it I I use the concept of it you know like Cause then, then it's easier for me to to put my own spin on it, you know, like, like Iron Giant. What if a, you know, a gun had uh, emotions or something like that? Um, do you, uh, would, can you recommend favorite books to recommend for character designs? Character design book. Oh no, is this like a? <laughs> for some reason, I thought of. Uh, Marvel Studios painting the Marvel Studios way. We have some cool stuff there, you know. How to paint Marvel Studios way, and uh, and there's some design uh, concepts there. Uh, more so, not like the stuff I'm showing you, um, but more like bigger ideas, um, blue sky stuff, and 
how to start that uh obviously this is all just supplementing what i said over there um there's the character design costume and character design book um costume design is it's hard because i i like looking at uh online like other designers and fashion books um i have a fa I, well i have a um what's his name again alexander mcqueen stuff and Vinny something book I, I like watching project runway <laughs> like I watch that. Uh, I I I did want to be a fashion designer at one point, but uh, uh, I finally got you know because of the Dora Milaje, a, a lot of people were looking at other fashion designers st or or people in fashion started following me, and the one particular person, the uh, uh, um, uh, what's his name? How can I forget these names right now? Uh, Lamar Kendrick Lamar. Oh wait, no, is his name Kendrick? Oh no, I'm I'm forgetting, forgetting his name. I know his last name is Lamar, um, uh, and then I saw his stuff, and it opens up to more people. And you know, Lisa likes fashion too. And I look at um, uh, um, Lisa's sister; she's really heavy into that. So I get inspirations from there. Uh, but there are little bits of pieces. I, it's it still is. Uh, my view in life, I guess, and and my comic books that I had when I was younger, um, those those are almost you could say they're design books you could look at. All the comic books, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would say I would say that. Um, sorry if I have long winded. I'm I think I'm a little tired already, and it's just like ah, thinking, thinking, um, and now I took off my glasses and I can't read. Instagram uh, but everyone out there in YouTube watching at YouTube and watching in Facebook hopefully this is uh, informative and um, you know um, if there's any more questions I could one more question one more question actually yes there's a lot of original characters I'm um, putting together pitching in different places uh hopefully something goes well and um you know i have my own show someday you know that could be something amazing uh uh, uh but characters like um i have a character in my merch i was selling these mer this merch but <laughs> but my wife is wearing something like that here this is my character that i created because I, I like hip hop, graffiti, and, and pop art and stuff. So I made my character Stitch Boy. So he's an intergalactic, multi dimensional uh, 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 secret agent. And he works with his sister, a uh, tech girl. Obviously, it's based on my kids. And I am doing like a little comic, web comic about him. Uh, still trying to figure out a right design for him. But. So a friend of mine made this for me. I uh, like a whole batch of merch, and here's this shirt. Uh, I have a red shirt too that I really like, but my wife's wearing it, and she doesn't want to come here in front of the. And then this was my my other shirt. So yeah, I I have I have this character that it started off as a cartoon really, and um, my friend just liked it when I showed him some sketches. Oh, we should make merch when you go to Taiwan to do your talk in Taiwan, and. Uh, I was gonna actually talk about that, uh, my story, my cartoon, um, and it's it's very co colorful and but still I, I'm still trying to figure out a style for it because um, the style I have now uh, I'm happy with I'm not happy with it's it's a bit hard when it's your own work, um, but yeah so that's one of my characters and I have other Filipino folklore characters I do like this is my tikbalang. Uh, design I did long time ago here and and there's a story to this because this is a painting I did for myself because I was about to do before Marvel I was going to do a short film I saved like $20,000 to do a short film in the Philippines and when I got to Marvel I was having so much fun I forgot about my short film uh, but uh, and then now <laughs> when I started thinking about it COVID happened and now COVID so uh, so I don't know when it'll get done. Uh, I storyboarded a lot of it already, and so I, 
I like that kind of stuff, creating worlds, doing stories. Um, I've got like eight ideas in like different levels of production right now. And just thinking about that, you know, I have like a, like a, um, like a space opera type thing uh, that, but some of it, not time to talk about, you know, now because it's, it's just really, I'm so busy with work, you know, it's not really something. What's this? Filipino Marvel? Oh, a Marvel character that's Filipino. Th there are. Look at the comic books. Uh, Wave. Wave is in the uh, in in the uh, Agents of Atlantis. I think it's called. Um, I bought that number one comic. Uh, number one issue. I'm sorry. Lionel Francis Yu. I think he designed her. I'm not sure, but I I saw him drawing her. Uh, Wave. She's from Cebu. Um, I still have to get the comic book and read it. Um, it's better for me audiobooks so I could draw while listening to that stuff. <laughs> um, oh, there's a book I want to recommend where pretty much I'm getting a lot of this stuff from, and it's more like a a, a film book. And not really. It, it can apply to a lot of things. It's called uh, um, Visual Story uh, by Bruce Block. That's like one of my favorite books and I don't read that much and I just finished that book and like all day I just read it. So that's how much I, I like that book. Anyway, uh, it's 12.09 and uh, um, I, what? Oh, later, uh, if you guys know that I'm going to do another stream with just sketching Baby Groot and just uh, again casual talking just for an hour. Um, Cause I like to do this thing called Grootober, and that that term, that coin the phrase, that coin the coin that phrase, was uh, uh, Rodney told me that hey why don't you do Grootober, and that sounds cool and Grootober designing baby Groot with different costumes for Halloween so when he goes trick or treating, you know, it could be different things. I've been doing it for like three years now, so uh, I'm slowly gonna stop doing it, but for this year I'll do it uh, one more time. Um, I haven't, I haven't been doing that because uh, I, I do it traditionally with pen and ink, and I haven't been doing pen and ink for like a while now. Another question. One more question. Okay, okay, guys, uh, and gals, and everybody that watched the stream. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I. So this, is be recorded, this one, what this this one. Yes, this time, since you hear my voice, I made sure that it's recorded. Oh, man, I, was, I feel so bad for, like, there are, uh, our uh, um, portfolio review. There was so much really good work and so much great questions and questions I, you know, I, that reminded me of when I was looking for work. And, you know, and the last question by Kim really was really a very, uh, like, a thoughtful, emotional question for me um and and i i really enjoyed that whole stream and i wish i could share it four hours it was four hours uh so much stuff that even i i want to I, I just wanted to see everyone's uh how do you say this? Uh, no i had the video up it's just no no volume but i wanted to see the the progression of all the artists you know i could go back to it uh someone did suggest that Maybe I could just voice over the video I already have. The that sounds cool. I could do that, but the part that that I won't be able to do is when they ask the question. You know, when 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 the people that show me their portfolio, the students and professionals that ask the question, uh, you could just hear, just hear the the emotion that goes into it, and 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 feel the weight right of it, and I just. Uh, it's just good to 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 be able to help people. Hopefully, the stuff I said helped. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna eat, so it's time for lunch. You guys take a break. Uh, I'll be around the Discord. Um, you know, so you guys head there. Um, Gum Road. Oh yeah, my Gum Road. I I'll share it. I'll share it on Discord. Uh, for to share the video or or um no no not the video sorry uh, to share the um or the pdf of, of all of the other things i talked about if you want like a text version and then i'll, I'll do a video version um soon or next week or something 
all right guys thank you again so much for for joining me and uh we'll see you again later um okay thank you again uh bye i'm gonna disconnect now uh if i no i'm pretty sure i recorded this please please make sure yeah, it looks like it's happening it's happening all right have a great week weekend have the best light box experience you have i wish i had a time to look through it but because of all my technical difficulties <laughs> trying to put the stream out uh, you guys know the guys from yesterday know you know when we were doing my talk with lisa um my wife it was it was um <laughs> it was hard <laughs> we had to move streams right luckily here i didn't have to move streams e everything's good okay okay bye guys i am going